I am a student, and I am a public speaker. I am a woman, and I am a scientist. I am a dancer, and I am an athlete. Back in 2008, I was chosen to be a part of the Trinity Academy of Irish Dance's World Championship team. And in 2008, we made U.S. history by being the youngest team to win two gold medals at the World Championships. Thus, I am a world champion Irish dancer. Now in 2011, I got third place with my team, but back in 2008, I won it all, and I won it all with a team. This is the biggest accomplishment of my life to date, and the hard work and dedication it took to get there cannot be overlooked anymore. Dancers are athletes too. Now, by the time I was about seven years old, I was already training at the national and international level. So on an average week, I would train about 10 to 12 hours. This is year round. Now, near a competition, I would add, I would train a 16 to 20 hours. And then if you were chosen to be on the world championship team, you just added an additional 20 to 24 hours just over the weekend. Now, let's compare that to the training of an Olympic athlete. They start training at the Olympic level for their sport four to eight years prior to going to the Olympics. When I was seven years old, I went to my first national championship, and by the time I was 11, I went to my first world championship. That's the same time frame as an Olympic athlete. Also, a lot of Olympians get education while training. It says they keep them grounded. Also, before they go to the Olympics, they train 20 to 23 hours a week year round. Now, as an Irish dancer, before a competition, we would train 16 to 20 within the same time frame as an Olympic athlete. A lot of them also, ironically, cross-train in dance styles such as jazz and lyrical to help them work on their artistry. Now, at the end of the day, of course, this can leave some pretty tired and sassy individuals. And even though I was not on the cover of Time magazine or on a cereal box, I did have my 15 minutes of fame by being on the Conan O'Brien show, the opening act of the Jerry Lewis Telethon in 2009, and also performing in multiple halftime shows in multiple NBAs. So, I think I've proved that Irish dancing is not a leprechaun doing a jig at a bar on St. Patrick's Day. It's much more than that. You need to be an artist to be an Irish dancer, but you also have to be an athlete. Irish dancing is extremely athletic and artistic. So dancers are athletes too. But let's take a look at this phrase. It's really a fill in the blank. Blank are blank too. Let's put this into motion. Professors are stressed too. This is Adam Stepanek. He is a lecturer at Valparaiso University in the meteorology department. Now, not only is he a lecturer of nine credits every week, he is also a PhD candidate at Purdue University. He is a student and a professor, two things you wouldn't think would go together. Another example, men are afraid to, and in this instance, I think a picture is worth a thousand words. Now an example that hits a little more home to me. This is a letter to the editor from Jared Malden, who is a senior mechanical engineer at Washington University. I found this in the Huffington Post. The article starts, to the women in my engineering classes, while it is my intention in every other interaction I share with you to treat you as my peer, let me deviate from that to say that you and I are in fact unequal. At first glance, this is a prime example of male superiority in the math and sciences. Let's take a, look, a further look into this article. I did not, for example, grow up in a world that discouraged me from focusing on a hard science. I was not overlooked by teachers who assumed that the reason I did not understand a tough math or science concept was, after all, because of my gender. So you and I cannot be equal. You have already conquered far more to be in this field than I will ever face. Women are scientists too. I'm a meteorology major here on campus and these are the ladies of the VU Meteorology Department. I think we look pretty good. Now, here on campus, it is a theme that women are the minority in the math and sciences. 
Now this is also a theme that stretches into the professional world. Also on campus, we have three major dance organizations, the Valparaiso University Dance Ensemble, the Crusaderettes, and also the Valpo Ballroom Team. Now looking at these pictures alone, you probably don't realize that there are future educators, artists, astronauts, and maybe even a future professor of this university. The power of AND is that you can further a conversation, relationship, or even break boundaries with just one little inquiry of the word AND. The phrase, dancers are athletes too, is just as powerful. It's about an intervention, breaking down boundaries that society gives us and truly getting to know someone's passions for the better. For example, knowing that dancers are athletes too is one thing, but appreciating and understanding that a dancer is an athlete is a whole nother level of human interaction. And this kind of human interaction is what we should be striving for here on campus. Are you up for it? Because I gotta tell you, dancers are athletes too. Thank you. <laughs>